talk about Phantasm, shall we? Hey everybody, Ryan Reed here. Today I'm doing a very kind of different video than what I normally do. Normally, you know, I do a movie review where I do impromptu reviews or, you know, we do a Fright Films where I break down a series like Phantasm. Um, but today I'm not talking about the movies themselves, I'm talking more about the releases of the film series. I basically just wanted to have a discussion about various releases of movies, and it applies to Phantasm because it's the most recent thing that's happened to me, but it could really apply to a lot of horror movie or just film franchises out there when we're talking about re-releases of versions or exclusive versions or things like that, and how the home video market has, has changed extensively over the years, and it's kind of become frustrating to, to collectors to some degree. So if you know some of this stuff, or if you, you know, disagree with me on some of this stuff, that's okay. This isn't going to be an old man yells at cloud type of segment. This is more going to be kind of a discussion of the various releases and breaking down kind of the, the flaws, especially with the Phantasm series, because it is such a limited series. And, and for those of you who are not familiar with Phantasm, basically Phantasm is a series that started in 79, uh, was uh, created by Don Coscarelli, and it's a very, very kind of low budget, uh, for the most part, horror movie franchise um, that isn't exactly your typical horror movie. It deals with interdimensional beings and your main villain is a guy called the tall man. So basically he's known because of his height. Um, but then you've got like a bunch of other stuff where you're traveling between different dimensions and, and things like that. So it's, it's very bizarre. Uh, and I highly recommend if you've never seen Phantasm, please check it out. It is a great film franchise and I really, really recommend it. It's something we're probably going to talk about on Fright Films at some point. But this is mainly just a breakdown to try and talk about how this series has kind of been unfairly released to some degree. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna start around here. So uh, I first saw Phantasm, or I first heard of Phantasm, probably oh, late to mid 2000s at some point. Um, I, that I think, I was trying to think about this the other day and I, I believe the place where I first heard about Phantasm was if you used to watch Bravo's 100 Scariest Movie Moments and they did 30 More Scary Movie Moments. Those little kind of like TV specials where they would break down moments from movies and a lot of them were movies. Maybe at the time you hadn't heard of now, you know, with the internet being what it is and everything, you, people have heard of a lot more crazy movies. But at the time, there were certain movies you'd see on that list and be like, oh, I've never heard of that. And I'm pretty sure Phantasm was one of that, was one of them. Well, in 2007, Anchor Bay, which used to be the best company for horror movies, later on they were bought out and they changed and, and they pretty, I don't even know if they exist anymore, but like, what Shout Factory, what Scream Factory, what Arrow, what Vinegar Syndrome, what all of those companies are now for movies, Anchor Bay used to be that place to go. And in 2007, they released both Phantasm 1, uh, on a new version DVD, and they released Phantasm 3 on a new version DVD. Now, if you're wondering, well, why did they release Phantasm 1 and Phantasm 3? That's a whole nother thing we're going to get into. Phantasm 1 was originally released uh, on Laserdisc and then later on DVD by MGM, and when they made Phantasm Oblivion, which is the fourth film, uh, MGM released a DVD version of that as well, and that's the version that I used to have. Um, so basically what happened, 2007, Anchor Bay comes out with a new version of Phantasm 1, new version of Phantasm 3. This was the first time Phantasm 3 was actually on DVD. And so I think at that point I'd seen Phantasm. I remember going to the video store and renting them like back to back to back. I rented Phantasm and then I think I rented Phantasm 2. And then the next day, like after Phantasm 2, I rented Phantasm 3 and 4 on the same day. And I remember this was back when it was like a mom and pop video store. I remember the people looking at me like, hey, you're really into the... Phantasm movies, huh? And I'm like, yeah, I gotta see the rest of these movies because this this series is crazy. I, again, I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen Phantasm, please go out and see it. So anyway, 2007, in the US, we get Phantasm 1 and Phantasm 3 on those special edition versions and they come with new bonus features and all kinds of really cool stuff. You get an audio commentary on each one. I believe Phantasm 1's audio commentary was from the Laserdisc. Phantasm 3, it was a new audio commentary to us in the US. Yes. And so you get all kinds of really cool new bonus features with it. Anchor Bay was always really good about those bonus features. Later on, a year later in 2008, they released 
This, the released Phantasm IV, Oblivion. Now, this had already had an MGM release. It was a bare-bones release. Then, in 2008, Anchor Bay got the ability to, whether they bought it off MGM or MGM's license expired or whatnot, uh, they uh, released a version of Phantasm Oblivion, which, for the first time, came with some special features. It's not a lot. It's a little behind the scenes. Uh, there's an audio commentary. Um, some, some other really cool stuff on that release. Now, the thing about the Phantasm films is they're very independent. Uh, they've mostly been financed by Coscarelli or, or, or through, you know, different means. The first one was, was shot for, I believe, $350,000. Um, and then they've kind of stayed in a, in a low budget range. It's something like $7 million, something like that, is the total for the entire five movie franchise at this point. So now at this point in 2008, you've got a awesome version of Phantasm 1 on Blu-ray, you've got an awesome version of Phantasm 3 on Blu-ray, you've got an awesome version of Phantasm 4 on Blu-ray, all released by Anchor Bay. And up to this point, there were only four Phantasm movies. Um, so you had the majority of them. Now here's the question some of you might be asking if you're unfamiliar with this. If you know Phantasm, you know the pain of this, but some of you might be going, yeah, but great, where's Phantasm 2? Phantasm 2 happens to be my favorite in the franchise. I love them all. I think they're all great in their own ways. That said, Phantasm 2 to me is the one that just there's something about it. The guy that was running Universal Studios at the time, he was a horror movie fan. And he knew Phantasm, loved Phantasm, and came to Coscarelli and was like, hey, can you make a sequel? The budget was still only $3 million, which, relatively speaking, is a really micro budget for a, a movie released by Universal Studios. I think at the year it was released, it was the lowest budget for any Universal movie. And so it was guaranteed to make money back. That said, it was kind of considered a flop when it came out. I think it only made like $7 million at the box office or something. Which is, I mean, still kind of, when you think about it, a movie that was made for $350,000, released very independently, and released almost 10 years earlier than that, for it to still a sequel to make 10 million or uh, 7 million excuse me dollars at the box office is pretty pretty remarkable and i love phantasm 2 because it just it's the one that feels the most 80s i love 80s movies i love the feel of them and it's not just because i love slasher movies and things like that i love the way the 80s movies look i love the film stock they use i love the way that they're shot i just there's something about the 80s and the way it looks that is awesome i think phantasm 2 is just a fantastic movie and is my favorite which is why it was frustrating the Phantasm 2 was only available on VHS for a super, super, super long time. Now, this is not the VHS copy that I originally rented. When something is unavailable like that, sometimes it's very frustrating when you're a fan of the series and you want to have them all. So I was Phantasm 2 list for many, 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 many years, from 2007 onward. And this VHS copy is actually something that I picked up uh, within the last year, I believe, um, I was at a um, Half Price Books and somebody had brought in a huge VHS horror movie collection, so I got this. I got the Salem's Lot um, shorter version that's up there that you see sometimes in the Fright films. Well, at that point, though, I had already had a copy of Phantasm 2, and that is because in 2009, two years after these came out, Universal begrudgingly went... All right, fine, we'll put out that movie that nobody cared about. Which, again, is ridiculous, because you can see that these movies are doing well. They have a strong fan base. So finally, in 2009, Universal put out this. This is the bare-bones DVD release with terrible cover art of Phantasm 2. And it was all you had at the time. Finally, though, finally, finally, I could say, I've, I've got all my Phantasm movies at the time, on DVD. I've, I've got them all. I've got the whole collection. Yeah, Phantasm 2, I think, deserves more, but you know what? It's there. Universal finally released it. You know what? This DVD's not terrible. The, the transfer's fine. It's kind of flat. It's kind of lifeless, but it was better than not having it. So finally, we had all four Phantasm movies together. It was glorious, and I was super happy. Well then, in 2013, Shout Factory, under their branch of Scream Factory. If you don't know them, they're one of the top in the game right now of releasing a lot of really cool classic cult horror movies and cult movies in general. Well, one of their very early, early releases in 2013 was this, was Phantasm II, the Collector's Edition. Now, you might be looking at this going, well, yeah, but it's just the same cover. That's not the, no, no, no. So here's the thing about, here's the thing about Scream Factory. Nine times out of ten, when they release a movie, they do reversible cover art. 
They always hire fantastic artists to do their version and give these movies a lot of like the cover art that they really deserve. The reason I switched it to the poster, the original artwork for Phantasm 2 is I just love that original artwork. It's, it's, that poster just epitomizes everything I love about the series. It, it's just so, so, so cool. So cool looking. And to be fair, uh, the original Shout Factory release, I don't really like their new cover art. I, I just, I never have. I didn't like that version of it. You know, I, I, I'm sure there are people out there who really like it, but that's one of the things I love about Scream Factory is the ability to reverse the cover art if you like. But this is the Scream Factory release. This came out in 2013, and it was basically giving Phantasm II the collector's edition that it really, truly deserved. You had a new commentary new to us. So here's the thing. Back in the UK, Phantasm 2 was released independently. It's not owned by Universal. So Anchor Bay, back when they released these, they were able to release a full four disc version of the Phantasm collection as one whole thing with bonus features for Phantasm 2, all kinds of stuff. But Scream Factory was able to uh, was able to license the movie and they gave it an upgraded DVD and an upgraded first time any of these films had been on Blu-ray, Blu-ray. And it's awesome. It comes with a bunch of special features. It comes with an improved picture, all kinds of stuff. And this came out in 2013. Now, for some reason, I did not buy it. I don't know why, and I, th there's a few things I can point to. I know for sure I was buying Blu-rays at the time, but you also gotta remember that at the time, I had my whole collection on DVD, and with only one movie being on Blu-ray, knowing me, I probably didn't think it was important to upgrade right away. I figured out it'll be around. Over the years, this idea of a collector's edition of the movie has become more and more prominent, and I think that's what's a little frustrating, is the fact that this movie, these movies, they come out and you can upgrade versions of them. But ultimately, when you get down to it, you're getting more and more and more collector's edition releases more frequently. Phantasm 2 came out with this special edition, and I didn't think anything of it. I thought, I'll pick it up down the road, I'll pick it up down the road, I'll pick it up down the road. Well, here's the thing that now, obviously a lot of people know about Scream Factory movies, they go out of print, and they don't last forever. So this movie actually, I just researched it, I found a post on the Facebook page for Scream Factory, and apparently this didn't go out of print until 2018. That said, I had the hardest time finding this movie on Blu-ray. After like, I don't know, a year or so, it was just impossible to find in stores. You just couldn't find it anywhere. And then you'd look online, it was going for like 50 bucks and like all these crazy prices, because it just started vanishing. And so for years, I kind of just, would occasionally look for it, it didn't exist. I would look for it, it didn't exist. I would look for it, it didn't exist. And so it kind of just fell off my radar, which is a bummer because all I heard about it when this movie came out was how good the upgrade was. My God, the transfer was amazing, blah, 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 blah. And when I was finally able to try and find it, I could not. And that kind of becomes a running theme with the Phantasm franchise. So skipping ahead, jumping ahead a little bit, in 2016, a company called WellGo USA got the rights to the Phantasm films, excluding Phantasm 2, of course. And so they did some new releases. Uh, first one being they released a remaster of Phantasm 1. This remaster was done by J.J. Abrams and his company Bad Robot. The other thing that they released at the time is Phantasm Ravager. Now, this movie came out and it is finally the fifth and final version in the Phantasm film series. It is super low budget and I think that's very important because we end the way we began. Um, you've got Phantasm 1, $350,000. Phantasm 2, $3 million. Phantasm 3, $2.5 million. Phantasm 4, I think, was around 600000 and so Phantasm 5 came out, and it was reportedly around three hundred to 350000 roughly the same as the first, but even on the commentary, Don Coscarelli and the new director, he's the first time Don Coscarelli did not direct the Phantasm film, um, they, they talk about it that they probably spent even less, and this really was a labor of love type of movie. They went out, they shot it on their own money, they shot it over weekends, and they made a movie that I think... Well, it has its flaws, definitely. Some of the, you know, effects don't hold up for a big budget thing, stuff like that. I think it is a great finale to the franchise. I think it's got all... If you love Phantasm for the same reason I do, which is just the craziness of the series and the fact that it is just a run-and-gun style, you know, for-no-money film franchise, 
let's make the biggest movies we can. It, to me, is a great conclusion to the franchise because of that. It has flaws, sure, but it's a great movie otherwise. So those two came out in 2016. Well, what I have since learned about Phantasm Remastered, the Blu-ray that they finally released of Phantasm 1, is that it's not the original version of Phantasm. And what I mean by that is they've cleaned up some of the effects. Now, before anybody says anything, I do want to say this is not George Lucas territory. Don Coscarelli did not go in and completely change the movie and add in thousands of, of you know, flying silver spheres or something like that. It's not bad. But as somebody who loves the original versions of movies, it's kind of a bummer because what they did, the few, the few effects that I know that they changed, they, they erased some fishing line. There's a paint bucket seen in the corner of the movie at one point that was like a not a prop it was meant to be like it was where they kept some like creature blood basically um and so they digitally tried to erase that but the big one is there's a shot of if you know the phantasm films you know that there's a flying silver sphere in them that that drills into people's heads and there's a shot of that and the effect um in the original film always looks a little weird it's like there's like an edge missing and stuff and so what they did is they went in and they replaced it with another physical sphere now look, I, this is going to sound nitpicky, but I am somebody who loves the original versions of movies. I think it's important to keep those around. And this Phantasm Remastered and every iteration of the original Phantasm after that has not come with the original version. And that's a bummer. It's a few little minor effects that in the grand scheme of things don't add up to much. But it is kind of disappointing because I do love the fact that flaws in filmmaking as somebody who studies filmmaking should be included. I think going in and changing and altering stuff too much, you, you run the risk of forgetting the importance of those original movies. And I think to somebody, you know, who is a fan of filmmaking, looking at the original version of Phantasm 1 and being like, yeah, it has some flaws. Oh, they there's some fishing line in that shot or there's this. It should also show you that like, oh, I can, I can do that. Like I could make this. And the more you kind of change things, the less approachable that that seems. That's just my take on it. I don't think Phantasm Remastered is a bad idea. I actually do think that the Blu-ray is a cool upgrade and is something I want to get. Uh, the other reason I have not got that yet is they did a collector's collection in uh, 2017. Finally, Will Go USA created a collection for Phantasm fans that included all five movies on Blu-ray with awesome reversible cover art. So if you wanted it to be just the collection that says one, two, three, and four on it, you can have that. Or you can flip around and do all the beautiful original theatrical cover art. And I, I love that about that set. That Phantasm collection, finally putting all of them on Blu-ray, because at the time you only had Phantasm 1 on the remastered Blu-ray, you had Phantasm Ravager on Blu-ray, and you had Phantasm 2 on Blu-ray if you could still find the, the Blu-ray around. But Phantasm 3 and 4 were not. Well, finally, with this set, you got Phantasm 3 and 4 on Blu-ray, and that is awesome. This collection came with a bunch of new special features, came with a new audio commentary on the original Phantasm, uh, new documentaries to go along with the documentaries for 1 and uh, 2, and they added 3 and 4 to get their own special documentaries, which is awesome. They have new interviews that aren't on this Blu-ray release of Phantasm Ravager, but are on the release of Phantasm Ravager in the box set, and you get a bonus disc. Now, why did I not upgrade this time? The main reason I did not buy it was this set disappeared incredibly quickly. It was an insanely limited release, and so if you went to go find it at Best Buy or something like that, it was gone like that. It was gone within a few weeks, it felt like. I mean, I might be, I might be wrong on that, but it felt like within a few weeks or at least a month or two, it was, it was gone and it was really hard to find that set. Even though I'm a collector of movies, I don't have a ton of money right out, you know, always right away to just go spend on a set. You know, I, I'm excited the set came out, but I'm the type of person that I can save up and go buy a set. But when a set is so limited like that, you either have to buy it day one, or you just risk not getting it. Because then as soon as it goes up on eBay, it's going for double, triple the price. I've seen some that are towards $300 for that collection when it came out at around 100. And I'm sure a lot of people relate to this. I'm sure there's people out there who are collectors who are like, oh, well, well, why don't you plan ahead and start saving early? Because you can't always do that. <laughs> people have financial responsibilities and going out and just spending $100 on movies that I do technically already own was just not 
it just wasn't something that was top priority for me. And I, again, thinking like I thought with Phantasm 2, oh, it'll be around. It'll stick around. No, it, it did not stick around. It was a collector's edition that disappeared very, very quickly. That was in April, I believe, of uh, 2017. Well, in September of 2017, they released a five-disc DVD collection of the Phantasm films for people who maybe didn't get that set, or maybe people who are fans but don't need the big kind of bells and whistles version of it. That version, I think, retailed for like 20 bucks. Um, it's still got the Shout Factory release, it's on DVD, but it was missing some of the special features, you know, some of the documentaries for Phantasm 2, and, I'm sorry, for Phantasm 3 and 4 and stuff like that. But you know what, for a set that came out for 20 bucks on DVD, whatever, it, it's not a bad way to go. I'm not a huge fan of the cover art, but again, you're buying a, all five movies in one set. This is for somebody who maybe is like, I've heard of those Phantasm movies, and I haven't checked them out, let me buy this set. Um, and the only reason I debated on getting the set, again, was for Phantasm 2. Even though it would be on DVD and not Blu-ray, I was like, well, you know, I, I, maybe I'll get this. But I never did because, again, I own all the other ones on DVD. And without the added bonus features for Phantasm 3 and 4, it wasn't really worth an upgrade considering the bonus features that were on there are the same ones that are on these discs. So I just kind of figured, yeah, there's, there's no reason to have to upgrade. And then 2018 rolls around, September 2018, a little after a year after the big collection came out and went out of print very, very quickly. Um, they announced that they were going to release Phantasm 3 and Phantasm 4 on Blu-ray, on their own versions. So if you already had Phantasm 2 on Blu-ray, Phantasm 1 on Blu-ray, you were good to go. But at the time, I still only owned Phantasm Ravager on Blu-ray. Everything else was DVD, so it really was the thing of like, well, I don't want to upgrade these yet because I don't, I can't find Phantasm 2. So until they re-release Phantasm 2, I don't want to own them all on Blu-ray and just have one on DVD. I kind of like having as much as I can uh, for a series in one format. I mean, there are some series that I don't have that. This was one where I was like, well, it would be super uneven. Like, I, I, I'm just going to wait, you know, which again, <laughs> I kind of have learned at this point that me waiting is the, probably the big problem. Shortly after that, they came out with a Phantasm Steelbook for the Phantasm Remastered Blu-ray on Steelbook. The thing that's frustrating about this that I have learned is that A, again, went out of print super quick. I'm not a huge fan of Steelbooks, so that was not the world's biggest issue to me. All right, let's fast forward. Fast forward. If you're sticking with me this far, let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to last month, July. July 2020. I went to my local DVD store. Um, there are this like record store uh, in our area that's kind of like a small chain. You can find a lot of cool movies there that are either harder to find or you know stuff that you maybe wouldn't think of somebody's traded in. They sell used, they sell new, they sell music, movies, games, all kinds of stuff. And I went into one one day. I was out and about and there it was. Phantasm 2 the Scream Factory release, just there, on a shelf, new. And I was so happy. This was something I had been looking for since 2013 when it came out, when I just didn't buy it then. And finally, there it was, Phantasm 2 Scream Factory release. I bought it, it was like 26 bucks, went home, popped it in, and found something out about the disc that none of the reviews I read when it originally came out in 2013 talked about. You had to, as I learned, dig deep into the internet to find other reviews from other just smaller websites who talked about this movie to talk about this problem. And that is at the top of the screen of this transfers for some reason, there is a thin layer of white noise. So you'll be watching the movie and there are white dots up on the top of the screen and it comes and goes throughout the entire movie. And so I started doing research and I was bummed. I was like, did I get, what's, what's wrong with it? And I saw some reviews that said, yeah, there is some white noise at the top of the screen of this transfer. It's unclear if this is a Shout Factory issue or the transfer that Universal gave to Shout Factory, but it's there. And so I thought, well, there's a ton of other reviews on this movie. A ton of other websites talking about how great this transfer is, how much better it is than this version. Maybe it's defective discs. It's got to be that, right? Like, so I took it back to them. 
I said, hey guys, uh, there, there's a manufacturing error with this. You know, can I do a return for this and, and see if there's another version in stock? Turns out there was another store did have a uh, used version that was slightly cheaper. So I went in there and I got the used version just in case. Turns out that's a problem with all the transfers of Phantasm 2 by Shout Factory. It's not the worst thing in the world. The movie's totally watchable. It's not like, it, unless it really only shows up in like night scenes or things like that. You can really see daytime. It's not as big a deal or, or just, it's fine. It's fine, and to people who aren't major movie buffs, you probably saw it and you go, what's the big deal? I didn't even notice it. That said, the Screen Factory release is a vast improvement. It really is. It's way better than the Universal DVD release. You get all those bonus features. The image quality is way better, although it does have issues. It's got compression issues. It's got some contrasting issues, things like that. Um, but in comparison, there, there is no comparison. This is a much better version for collectors, for people who love this film franchise. And that 2017 Wellgo USA collection actually just uses this disc. It uses the exact same disc, even down to when you pop it in, it says Shout Factory at the beginning. So, 2019, Wellgo USA once again releases the entire Phantasm collection in one set for people who didn't get to buy the original set. In December of 2019, you know, the time of year when people tend to buy a lot more gifts and are saving their money. So if you're like me, you're not buying things for yourself. <laughs> and this came out like mid-December. So a lot of the people I know do a lot of early Christmas shopping. So it wasn't even something I could be like, eh, maybe put that on your list. Or It was just something that I was like, again, should know better at this point, but I was like, eh, it'll be around. It'll be fine. The things that they were talking about that were new to it were very, there was very few details on it until the set actually came out. And so at the time they were like, oh, it's a new 4K scan of Phantasm 2, which it's still on Blu-ray. And I don't have, even if it was a 4K disc, I don't have a 4K player, so that wouldn't matter. But a new 4K scan just means a more clearer image. And, and yes, I am a technical type of person in terms of like, I like the best image quality I can, but an upgrade of 1080p to 1080p, slightly different transfer, not the world's biggest issue. The other thing is that it had a new documentary about Phantasm Ravager, which I would love to see. But again, it's Christmas time. It's, you know, I'm not going to go spend $100 on myself when I'm trying to save and spend money on everybody else. So I didn't get this set. Cut to July when I buy this version of Phantasm 2, and I finally start looking into upgrading all the Phantasm movies on Blu-ray. And we encounter the major issue. Phantasm 1, not exactly the same. So you gotta keep this. Also learned that the Phantasm 1 release has two versions. So you have the remastered version, which just basically includes mostly the same special features as this, plus like an episode of some car show where they talk about the CUDA. However, on the collector's edition set that they did in 2017, it came with a new commentary. The only way to get that new commentary out of the set that was out of print was to buy the Steelbook edition which then included the new commentary, but was also now out of print. When they released, when Wogo USA released the Blu-rays for Phantasm 3 and 4, they did not include all the special features that they made for this collection, which is out of print, by the way. So when you buy Phantasm 3 and 4 on Blu-ray, all you get are the same special features that are on these DVDs. Wogo USA specifically made documentaries for this collection, for Phantasm 3 and 4. A year later, they release them on Blu-ray and don't include those. You can only get them in a set that, again, is now out of print. Except for image quality, why am I gonna upgrade these Blu-rays and pay 20 bucks for each one of them if they don't include all this extra stuff? Come to find out, the other thing, after buying this, finally finding this version of Phantasm 2 on Blu-ray, Come to find out, the new set, released in 2019, includes the uncut version of Phantasm 2, which if you know anything about Phantasm 2, the scene with the flying silver sphere that kills a priest and drills into his head was heavily cut by the MPAA. So people, there is work print footage on this disc of what it was supposed to look like in the bonus features and everything like that. So now the only way to get all those bonus features and an uncut version of Phantasm 2 was to buy the Silver Sphere set. Well, I looked into it. There are very few Best Buys that carry it anymore. 
you can't order it online. You can't order it off Wogo USA's like website. It is July. It's six months after it's released. And I know some people are like, oh, it's a long time. But when you're looking at physical media, six months is not that long of a time. It came out in December, right before Christmas. So I was like, I'll wait and I'll get it. But no, it doesn't exist anymore. My hair's probably all crazy now because I just did that. But like, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't, you cannot get this version of, of this collection anymore. It's already a limited release and it's already out of print. So when you look at this Silver Sphere collection, it came with a collectible Silver Sphere, which is cool, but it comes with Phantasm Remastered with the new commentary, it comes with the new 4K uncut scan of Phantasm 2, plus all the bonus features, it comes with Phantasm 3 and Phantasm 4 with those extra bonus features, it comes with Phantasm 5 and all of the new documentary they made for that, plus some other bonuses on a bonus disc. And it's out of print. You can't get it. It's super limited. So why am I talking about this? Why did I make a video that's getting very long at this point, just kind of ranting about the Phantasm films? It's because I love this series and I really would love to be able to upgrade it in a manner that is, you know, timely, in a manner that fits my budget. Phantasm 2 I understand because of being owned by Universal, but they were still able to do a 4K version of it that's only been exclusive to this set and we have had no word if we're getting a separate disc for that. So it'd be one thing if they had the collection still and they released bare bones versions of the Blu-rays and it's like, hey, if you want all the special features, get the collection, but if not, get the, get the Blu-rays. I'd understand that. But these, both the versions of the collections are out of print and you're either paying crazy high prices for them on eBay or you're happening, happening to find them. Um, and that's, that's a bummer. That's a bummer for a movie fan. I love this franchise. I love all these movies that Don Cosk really made. I think they're, they're fun, crazy, brilliant movies. And they're kind of a masterclass in how to make movies for cheap. And I really appreciate that. But it's very frustrating that I, I can't get the best versions unless I buy them immediately. I love that we have companies like Scream Factory and Arrow and, and Vinegar Syndrome and uh, Blue Underground and like all these companies releasing movies that does, you know, that wouldn't always get the attention they deserve. You know, you can go buy Arrow's version of Basket Case and get the best version of it you can. Or even Halloween 3, which is a movie that finally got the attention deserved from Scream Factory. I love that these movies are getting true collector's editions and, and they deserve it. But as a collector, as a fan of this, of, of something like Phantasm, when it's really limited and you're kind of re-releasing it constantly and then making it impossible for people to then buy it afterwards, that's tough. I'd love to give Welco USA some money for the Sphere collection. I'd love to give them money for separate versions of these discs, you know, later on. Even if it was the discs released with their special features, but then maybe you didn't get the bonus disc that you got, the, whatever. Maybe this video will kind of become obsolete. Maybe we will get another version, or maybe we'll get a better version of Phantasm 2 out on Blu-ray. If anybody knows of a Best Buy around you that has uh, the Sphere collection, let me know because I looked. Uh, there's none around 250 miles within where I live. Or if somebody at Wellgo USA, you know, sees this video, just know that I love the products you're putting out. I just wish I could buy them. <laughs> I wish I had more time to buy them. So anyway, to reiterate, I love the Phantasm series. This is not, you know, a jab at anybody who works at Wellgo or at Don Coscarelli or anybody involved. I, I really want you guys to know how much these movies mean to me and how much I love them, but I just wish I could get the best versions of them. <laughs> That's all. I wish I could get the best versions of them and, and buy them when I'd like to, so. But let me know, what do you think in the comments down below? Are you a collector of these films or films in general? Do you rush out and buy them? Do you wait until they go on sale? How do you purchase things? And do you agree with me? You know, again, this is not, I'm not trying to, to be angry about this or anything, but do you think that when these collector's versions come out, it'd be nice to have bigger, you know, like better releases, longer time frames to be able to pick them up? Or are you a day one purchaser? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, this is the first time I've done a video like this, but if you want to see some of the other stuff I've on my channel, you can watch Fright Films, my horror movie analytical show. You can watch Impromptu Reviews, which is my movie review show, all kinds of stuff on the channel. So check that out and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.